Hey, Grid. Welcome back to another episode of the Lockdown Podcast. I'm your host, TFA. We're finally cruising along here with the first season, which means we finally have enough content for me to start producing these podcasts a lot more frequently. Um, This one took a little while. It took me time to get to know everybody in the league, as well as play styles. Um, And without daddy leagues right now, it makes it real hard to track stats and stuff like that. So I wanted to get kind of an accumulation of stats, um, see how the year was going to start off before I kind of really started banging these podcasts out. I'm excited to really be back. Um, I want to welcome all the newcomers who weren't here during the release of my first Lockdown Podcast episode. Um, welcome to tuning in, guys. Welcome to the grid. I also want to give a shout-out to Gub Geeks, who just recently got the call-up. Each and every one of us are waiting for, and finally made it to the NBL. So congrats and farewell, and good luck in the big leagues, Gub. Without Daddy Leagues, I'm going to focus on our records and stats so far on the season in this episode, and focus on everything that has happened so far in the first season of Madden 17, The Grid. Starting in the AFC, we're going to have the AFC East, which has been an absolute disaster up until this point. This is my division. Um, There's currently a three-way tie right now between the Bills, myself, the Jets, and the Patriots. Um, We're all three and seven right now. The Dolphins are sitting at one and nine. This division has been absolutely terrible. The fact that we have a three-team tie for the lead for the division um, after 10 games at three and seven is really saying a lot. Um, I'm the Jets owner right now. I've played real, real bad, and the fact that I'm still tied for the division lead is saying something. We definitely all need to pick it up, um, step it up here, and and close out the season well. The AFC North is almost the complete opposite of the AFC East right now. The Cincinnati Bengals are leading the way at 8-2, and and are currently on a 7-game winning streak. Um, I believe this owner has not lost since he came into the league, um, so that's something to keep an eye out for. You know, he's technically undefeated, I believe, going uh, going into week 12 here. Um, that's going to be real interesting to see if he can keep that, that momentum heading towards the, uh, the postseason. He's got two teams right on his heels. The Browns and the Ravens are sitting just one game back at seven and three. So this is a really tight division right there up at the top. You've got three teams that are vying for not only a division, but a playoff spot. And then you have the Steelers that round out the division at five and four. Backley had to take a little bit of a, uh, a leave of absence here. But I think now that he's back, I think he's going to step right back into this race. Um, I think this is a, a strong division. I think every team in this division definitely could finish over 500, um, and every team's going to make a push for the playoffs. The AFC South right now sees the Texans leading the way at a league best 9-1 and record. They're tied for the league lead um, when it comes to their record at 9-1, and but they've got the best record in the AFC. Um, just one game behind them is the Jags at 8-2. and um, both these teams are real, real good. You have the Titans that are putting up real respectable numbers right now at six and four. Um, they're playing well, but they have a lot of work to do if they want to compete for the division with how good the top of this division has been. And then you have the Colts that are rounding out the bottom of the AFC South at two and seven. As of right now, I think the AFC South front runner uh, to, is the you know this is going to be the division that's uh, the favorite to uh, send a team to the Super Bowl this year in the AFC. I don't think uh, the division is is. I think it's a strong division. Um, I think it's really strong up at the top, too. I haven't played Shop um, or 24 yet, um, but they're they're both doing great jobs with their teams this season. They both have a great shot at taking home the first Super Bowl of Madden 17. I'm really interested to see how these guys finish the season and uh, see which one of these guys takes the division. Heading over to the AFC West, we have the division-leading Broncos at 8-2, and two, and they hold the biggest division lead in the AFC of just two games. Um, they're over the Chiefs. Um, who are sitting right behind them at 6-3. and three. So, you know, this tells you how close the races are in the AFC. Um, we're already in Week 11, and, you know, the biggest lead for a division is only two games. Um, so it's really going to come right down to the wire here at the end of the season. Uh, the Raiders are only three games back. They're sitting at 5-5, five and five, and the Chargers are currently sitting at 3-7. and seven. Overall in the AFC, I think it's going to come down to the wire. Um, you know, Every division is going to be real close. I think we could have potential that, that the last week of the season decides uh, who the four division winners are as well as who gets the wild card spot. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Shotmaster with the Texans and 24 with the Jags right now are my AFC favorites. Uh, let's see if a dark horse emerges and is able to challenge either one of these guys. Heading over to the NFC now, we're going to hop into the NFC East. This has the Redskins holding a two-game lead over the Cowboys, who currently lost three games in a row. The Eagles are currently in third place at 4-5-1. and one. It'll be interesting to see if the Eagles' one tie hurts or helps their playoff chances as we get down to the wire. There could be a potential where if they get hot here, um, you know, they could end the season at 10-5-1, and one, or if they, you know, if they possibly go, uh, you know, 9-5-1, um, you know, or 9-6-1, nine, nine, sorry. 
this could be a really interesting uh, team to watch as, as we come down to the wire. The Giants right now are rounding out the division at 1-9. They've currently lost eight games in a row. Um, this team's had a lot of turnover so far on the season. Let's see if the new ownership can uh, can turn it around and get headed in the right direction. The NFC North currently sees the Bears holding the division lead at 7-3. and three. This is one of the more surprising teams that I uh, that I think is leading the division right now. The Bears come into the season. They're definitely not a team that's going to blow you away with the talent on the roster. So it's really good to see that owner Calvin has been able to get off to such a great start with them. Two games back of the Bears are the Vikings at 5-5, five and five, followed by the Packers at 4-6, and six, and the Lions at 0-9-1. Uh, could we potentially see a winless team in the grid this season? The Lions are certainly threatening that right now. The NFC South, much like the AFC East, has not had the best season. Uh, the Falcons lead the race at an even 500. They're sitting at 5-5. Five and five. That's enough to give them a two-game lead, believe it or not, over the Saints, who currently sit at 3-6, and six, with the Buccaneers and Panthers three games back of the division lead at 2-7. and seven. This is another division where all it takes is for one team to get hot, string together two or three wins here late in the season, and they could possibly uh, win the division and make the playoffs. Finally, in the NFC, you're going to have the NFC West. Uh, both the Seahawks and the Rams sit tied at 9-1, and one, fighting for the division lead. They also are fighting for the best record in the grid this season. Um, you know, there's three teams. you got the the, uh, the Texans, the Seahawks, and the Rams all at 9-1. and one. It's going to be interesting to see which one of these uh, teams can take home the, uh, the top record. This is going to be a really tight race here as the season progresses in this division. Uh, neither team's lost on the road yet this season, which I think is really interesting. Most of the time, uh, you know, you see teams that are hot. Uh, they're playing better at home, but, you know, both these teams are 5-0 and on the road. Uh, they are definitely both look to be on pace for a playoff spot, too. They both want to grab the number one seed. I think this is going to come down to, uh, you know, whoever wins this division, I think, is going to make a deeper playoff push here in the NFC. The 49ers uh, are currently, you know, they've been respectable. They're sitting at 5-5, five and five, but they're stuck behind two teams, you know, that are tied for the best record in the league. So, you know, when you're sitting at 500 at 5-5 five and five and you're four games back, it's kind of tough to make any sort of run. The Cardinals are going to round out the NFC West at 4-6. and six. Again, you know, not having an awful year. They're just, they're a couple games out of, uh, you know, behind 500. I think they could finish the year well, uh, and this could be a really respectable division heading into the playoffs. If I had to pick my Super Bowl matchup right now, um, I'm going to go with the uh, the Seahawks versus the Jaguars. Uh, it's going to be T. Porter against uh, 24, but when it comes to Madden, you know, anything can happen in any given game. It's going to be interesting to see here how the season ends, who makes the playoffs, and, and where we go from there. Now I'm going to shift my focus a little bit to the team perspective, from the team perspective, um, and focus a little bit more on the individuals, on these teams, and how the key players have fared so far this season. I think right now the thing that stands out the most to me is how poor the quarterback play has been. Um, we've had really, really bad quarterback play throughout the league so far. No one's really lighting it up. There's not a single quarterback in the league that I think is really setting the league on fire um, and convincingly, lead, convincingly leading their team. Um, right now, Kirk Cousins, I would say, has been the best quarterback, you know, most consistent week in and week out. He's currently sitting with the best QBR of all qualifying QBs. He's got a quarterback rating of 123 right now. He's definitely been the best quarterback throughout right now throughout the uh, the start of the season. Blake Bortles currently leads the league in touchdown passes with 20, uh, while Ryan Tannehill is leading the league with interceptions with uh, 26. That's quite a bit of interceptions here in week 11. Um, you know, he's averaging just over two interceptions a week. Um, you know, like I said, no one's really lighting this race up. I do want to give a, a bit of a shout out here to the Broncos. His rookie quarterback Paxton Lynch has put together a great rookie season so far. Um, to me, he's one of the top three quarterbacks in the league right now based on stats. He's completing a lot of passes. He's not turning the ball over too much. He's getting, you know, decent yards. Um, he's really managing the game for the Broncos, so it'll be interesting to see if he can finish off the season um, and how he's going to progress going into next season. Skipping over to the running backs, there's really only one guy to talk about if anybody's been looking at the, uh, the league stats or kind of keeping an eye on everything. Uh, Todd Gurley right now is just is setting the league on fire. He's already reached the 1,000-yard mark in his sophomore season here. He's totaled uh, 1,173 yards and 10 touchdowns through 10 games. The next closest rusher right now in terms of yards is TJ Yeldon, and he's only sitting, uh, you know, he's over 400 yards behind Gurley. He's only sitting at 700-something right now. Um, you know, so that's a pretty a pretty big leap um, from the first to second rushers. Both guys are SEC guys, so they definitely are... Uh, Definitely, you know, up and coming backs. They're both young. It's going to be interesting to see if uh, if Todd Gurley can actually go ahead and carry the Rams to uh, to that division lead and, and possibly a Super Bowl. The next, uh, let's see, we got um, Todd Gurley 
you know, I think he's going to lead the MVP race. He He's going to win it, in my opinion. I think he's going to win the MVP on the year. Um, I don't really see anybody else taking him out with no one at quarterback lighting it up. Um, I, I don't think anybody else is doing more for their team right now than Gurley is. You know, he's got the yards. He's got the touchdowns. He's the reason that the Rams are even tied for the division lead and the best record. Um, so I really think that he's got a, a good shot here as the season closes out to finish up and, and be the MVP. You've got uh, rookie halfback CJ Proces for the uh, the Seahawks. He right now leads the league uh, for a rookie rushing, and he has 634 yards and eight touchdowns. So that's a pretty interesting stat. Um, so we've talked about, you know, we've got Paxton Lynch over in the AFC with the Broncos at quarterback. He's leading the uh, the league for uh, rookie passers. And now we've got a rookie rusher over there in, uh, in Seattle. And I don't think anybody thought coming into the season that this guy was even going to uh, be the starter. But he's, you know, he's he's got the yards, he's got the touchdowns, and he's coming on strong. And, you know, we've got a, a nice two uh, running back tandem there with uh, with CJ and uh and Todd Gurley over there in the uh, the NFC West. Um, both these guys, you know, they're sitting at nine and one, and, and they're both really finding a way to run the ball. So, um, if that's any indication of, of how this league is going to go this year, you know, we don't have any quarterbacks lighting it up, but we've got some young running backs and and some running backs for some good teams that are right there on the top. Um, so, you know, those teams out there that are passing the ball a lot more and not having a lot of luck. You know, maybe find something on the offensive side with running the ball. Uh, maybe up your offensive line a little bit, do a little bit different, change it up. Um, but clearly it's working for these guys, so they must be doing something right. If we head over to the receiving stats right now, we're going to see Julio Jones, Des Bryant, and A.J. Green all leading the way. These are three guys that you would expect to be at the top of the league, and they definitely are. Um, they're all within 150 yards right now of eclipsing that century mark on the season. Uh, former Ohio State quarterback Braxton Miller right now is leading the rookie uh, receiving yards with 568 yards and three touchdowns. Um, I definitely didn't see that coming to the season. I think there are a lot of uh, really electric rookie wide receivers. And uh, to see that Braxton Miller, the former quarterback, is leading the way on receiving yards is definitely a, a cool stat to look at. Defensively, we've got Justin Houston of the Chiefs currently leading the way with 12 sacks, and Jonathan, Jonathan Joseph of the Texans is currently leading the way with uh, seven interceptions. You've got rookie cornerback Brandon Williams of the Cardinals. He's tied for the league lead in defensive touchdowns with two. And he's tied with uh, defensive end Dante Fowler, who technically is a rookie this year. He was hurt last year, so technically this is his rookie season. Um, so it's good to see two rookies are leading the league in uh, defensive touchdowns. That's a pretty cool stat. The Jaguars currently lead the league in points allowed. Um, they're only allowing 119 points so far on the season, which is barely 12 points allowed a game. On the other hand, you've got the Dolphins, who have already allowed 311 points. Uh, you know they're on pace to allow um, so many points a game. You know they're averaging 31 points a game allowed, um, and that's definitely not a stat that you want to see here as the season progresses. That's going to be all for this week, guys. Um, I hope you enjoy the stats. Hope you enjoyed looking at kind of you know where everybody sits. It's going to be real interesting to see how these playoff races turn out and, and how uh, you know just individual stats are going to turn out here on the season. Um, it's definitely going to be a tight race here to, to end the season with the stats leaders, MVP, um, and all that good stuff. Those are some awards that people are definitely going to want to have to take home. I'm going to get you some progression points, obviously, um, and help build your team a little bit better. Be sure to tune in next week. I'm going to take a deep, hard look at the playoff picture, as well as what this offseason has to offer. I'm going to be talking draft prospects, potential free agents, and a lot more. So thanks for tuning in this week, guys. The playoff picture is real tight, so let's see who finishes the race strong and makes a heavy push for a coveted playoff spot. As always, I'm your host, TFA.